Meet the Buccaneer, the SB-2A-4, a fast, powerful scout and dive bomber equipped for land-based operations. The Buccaneer also is built with folding wings for use on aircraft carriers. Pulling 1,700 horsepower on the takeoff, the Buccaneer has ample speed and maneuverability and will fly a maximum gross weight of 15,000 pounds. Her bomb load is carried inside the fuselage and may consist of two 500-pound bombs or a single 1,000-pound bomb. The landing gear is stiff and rugged to take the smack down of carrier landings. And the wide spacing of the wheels lend this airplane exceptional stability on the ground. A total fuel... stable while taxiing unless allowed to swing excessively. The rudder is effective in keeping a straight course and visibility from the cockpit is good. The brakes are very powerful when cold and should be applied with a smooth pressure to avoid over control. A sharp turn on the ground will leave the swiveling tail wheel in a sidewise position. Always taxi forward a few feet after turning in order to align the tail wheel before starting your run. As you pause at the takeoff spot, go carefully through the checkoff list. Propeller control, low pitch, high RPM. Mixture control, full rich. Supercharger control, locked in low. Carburetor air heat control, full cold. Cowl flaps, open. Tab settings for takeoff are rudder two and one half units right. Aileron neutral. Our first takeoff will be made with flaps up, so the elevator tab will need to be trimmed one quarter unit nose down. Fuel selector valve, unreserved. Tail wheel, locked and hood sections locked open. You will need 43 inches of manifold pressure at 2600 RPM for your takeoff. Move the throttle smoothly up to the stop, and when you are sure you have full rated power, release the brakes and start your takeoff run. During the early part of the run, a slight tendency to swerve to the left may be noticed, but this is easily corrected by rudder action without recourse to the brakes. A clean wing takeoff like this will require a relatively long run. At approximately 55 knots, the tail will lift. And at close to 80 knots, the airplane will fly herself off. Now let's try a takeoff with the flaps down for the full distance of the takeoff run. For this type of takeoff, the elevator tab will need to be trimmed three quarter units nose down. Again, the tail will lift at about 55 knots. the getaway speed will be around 75 knots, and the run will be somewhat shorter due to the increased lift provided by the flaps. When you are comfortably airborne, the landing gear should be retracted. Continue in a gradual climb until you have an altitude of at least 325 feet and an indicated airspeed of not less than 97 knots. Now you can bring your flaps up a step at a time. 
The airplane will have very little tendency to sink when the flaps are retracted gradually in this manner. As soon as possible after the takeoff, throttle back to about 30 inches of manifold pressure and adjust propeller to give 2200 RPM. For all climbing operations, be sure the mixture control is set for full ridge and keep a close watch on cylinder head temperature. If the temperature tends to go above 220 degrees, the cowl flaps must be opened to provide additional cooling. They create some buffeting at full open and have a high drag. If possible, don't open them more than one half. If head temperature continues to rise, reduce RPM or nose down to increase air speed. Never exceed 248 degrees centigrade under any condition. The best climbing speed varies from 124 knots indicated at sea level to 109 knots at 23,000 feet. In a rated power climb with service loading, the plane is slightly unstable, but not enough to interfere with normal or instrument flying. For a climb at normal rated horsepower, you will be turning 2400 RPM at 37 and a half inches of manifold pressure. You can carry this power up to 9700 feet, where the shift to high supercharger ratio will be made. As you ascend from 6700 to 9700 feet, a slow, steady drop in manifold pressure will be observed. When the indicated maximum altitude for low supercharger operation is reached, retard throttle slightly and adjust prop control to give 1,700 RPM. Then shift quickly from low to high supercharger. This will enable you to get 41 inches of manifold pressure at 2,400 RPM up to an altitude of 13,000 feet. For maximum cruise at 75% power, you can rev at 2,180 RPM and carry 30 inches of manifold pressure in low blower up to 16,800 feet and 32 inches in high blower up to 19,400 feet. The mixture control should be placed in cruising lean for maximum cruise operation, as well as for cruising at 67% and 60% of rated power on long scouting missions, where fuel economy is a prime governing factor. In level flight, you should fly the airplane in good trim to overcome high control loads. The directional and lateral controls have considerable effect on each other and must be coordinated to obtain the best trim. Due to the small aileron angles used, the airplane tends to roll slowly in response to aileron control at moderate speeds. However, this does not indicate any loss of lateral control. Now let's observe some of the stall characteristics of the Buccaneer. This one will be made with power off and wing flaps retracted. The stalling speed is close to 82 knots. The stall is gentle with a slight tendency to roll to left about 15 degrees. If recovery is made promptly, there is no tendency to spiral dive or spin. However, if the stall is held beyond the initial stages, as in this demonstration, the airplane will roll about 60 degrees to the left and go into a spiral dive. Recovery from this situation is slower, but otherwise entirely normal. In a power-off stall with flaps down, as seen here, the stalling speed is close to 75 knots. The tendency to fall off to the left again is characteristic, but recovery is prompt and normal unless the stall is held beyond its initial stages, when the roll will be more pronounced, followed by a spiral dive. With power on and flaps down, as in this case, the tendency to roll to the left is accentuated. But recovery can be made promptly in the usual manner. Since the primary offensive mission of the Buccaneer is dive bombing, the recommended technique for handling this airplane in dives is extremely important. In preparation for diving, the checkoff list should be followed step by step. Fuel selector valve on any tank except right main. Mixture control, full ridge. Propeller as desired, but never permit the RPMs to exceed 2880. Throttle set to hold manifold pressure at not more than 20 inches. Cowl flaps closed. Rudder tab, one and a half units left. Open. Dive.
diving flaps open. As the plane is flown into the dive, roll elevator trim wheel forward one half turn. The airplane is steady in the dive and can be rolled easily with the ailerons to stay on the target. Terminal velocity will be close to 261 knots at the end of a 10,000 foot dive. About 30 to 40 pounds will be required on the control stick for a normal pullout. This stick pressure can be reduced by slowly and carefully adjusting the elevator tab. Such a procedure will affect a gradual recovery and not put undue strains on the airplane. However, this should be considered as an emergency method. The Buccaneer is capable of performing the usual acrobatic maneuvers, but it should be allowed to fly through each stage of a maneuver and not forced, particularly on top of a loop such as this one, which was entered at a speed of 216 knots. starting speed of 195 knots. The Immelman turn, executed at a starting speed of 243 knots. entered at a speed of 205 knots. speed of 173 knots. bank performed at 170 knots. in for a normal landing, the check-off list should be followed methodically, point by point. Mixture control, full rich. Fuel, on reserve. Pause long enough to check fuel pressure on right main to guarantee an adequate reserve. Carburetor air, full cold. Adjust propeller to give 2400 RPM. Wheels down. The warning horn will blow if gear does not extend fully. Flaps, down. Tail wheel, locked. As you approach the runway, throttle back to about 90 knots. Make allowance for the fact that the airplane will float a little with power on. If you are coming in light with the center of gravity somewhat forward, a three-point landing is difficult. 
In this case, land wheels first and let the tail wheel come down on the runway before applying your brakes. You will get best results by not touching the brakes until you have slowed down to about 54 knots. Then you can bring the airplane to a stop by a smooth, full application of brakes and avoid heating them up too much. Now let's watch a field carrier landing. You use the normal landing checkoff list. Of course, for an actual carrier landing, you also would unstrap your parachute, unlock the tail wheel, and put down the landing hook. This time your approach will be made at around 85 knots, but remember to watch the signal officer, not the airspeed indicator. You'll be coming down to the mat in almost a stalling attitude. At the signal, you'll cut the throttle, put the nose down very slightly, then pull back on the stick and make a normal landing. In a real carrier landing, you'll hang on the wire and smack down with some bounce. But that's normal and the landing gear can take it. The Buccaneer is fast, easily maneuverable, and armed to defend herself adequately. She demands nothing beyond sound pilot technique to perform her scouting missions ably.